This master is a pioneer master. Are we on time? We don't know. The VU University Amsterdam has started a master climate change and sustainability. With me in the studio to tell us more about it, assistant professor Alexandra Duarte Correa. Do I say it? Do I pronounce it properly? Perfectly. Like a Portuguese? Almost. Almost. <laughs> you are Portuguese? I am Portuguese. I watched your uh, CV at a glance and I saw all different cities. So you traveled a lot during studies. I've been right? lucky. Yeah. I've uh -huh. been lucky. So I'm Portuguese. I am a lawyer by training. Yes. I have studied law uh, in Portugal. Yeah. Uh, but I've been lucky enough to uh, live and work in six countries. Uh, oh, but that's not lucky. You choose to. You chose to do that. I chose, but there's always luck involved. Uh -huh. uh, uh, but yes, I've worked hard uh, to achieve that, uh, and I, it's very much thanking to to the VU University because mm. they gave me the opportunity to add a few more countries to, your list. <laughs> to this list. W and which countries are that that, that you So it's Portugal, yeah. my, my, um, uh, the country where I'm from, yeah. the country where I was born and lived most of my uh, time so far. Yeah. Uh, in Brussels, uh, in Belgium. So I've uh, worked in the European Commission as well. Yeah. And then uh, I came to the Netherlands. Uh, to the VU University. I've done my PhD uh, in sustainability reporting at the VU, yeah. at the private law department where I am now. Uh -huh. um, and then through the PhD, I've been uh, able to travel uh, to the countries of my research. Uh -huh. and that Brazil? Brazil, uh, Sweden and the US. Um, so three countries in the Netherlands. I focus the, the research here in the Netherlands yeah. as well. Okay. Um, so that adds... And now live and now live in Amsterdam. Yes, okay. I live and work here okay. uh, in Amsterdam. And you teach on the VU, uh, and I didn't pronounce it properly because it's officially it's international business law, climate change, and sustainability. A new master. Yes, a special um, track, a new uh, track. The master in international business law already existed before. Uh, this is a track we, within... Two tracks. We have we had two tracks. Yeah. And now, since September, very proudly, we yeah. launched our third uh, specialization in climate change and sustainability. Why? So this is, uh, first of all, we are really proud, once again, I say it because we, we are, this master is a pioneer master yeah. that combines law, uh, business law, with uh, climate change and sustainability. First in the world, right? First in the world. Yeah. Uh, we have worked hard uh, to get uh, the best um, professionals with us, mm. academic, but also um, guest lecturers. We have top professionals coming from the business world mm. uh, to participate in our classes, mm. um, we uh, maybe I can say that it's twofold um, the reasons why we have uh, decided to start this master. Yeah. First of all, um, we see an increasing demand of sustainability professionals yeah. uh, in, in law practice. In, in practice, yeah. uh, in different areas, of mm. course, uh, all different areas, but that includes law as yeah. well. Yeah, in all areas, so to speak, because it's such a big... Topic. All is far-reaching. Yeah. Uh, so we see that, and there is um, a gap knowledge uh, mm. of um, the combination, uh, the expertise in law mm. and climate change and sustainability. Mm -hmm. Although there are um, a group of lawyers um, already specialized, mm. uh, making the link of um, sustainability, climate change and uh, the law, mm -hmm. but there is still uh, a large uh, gap of knowledge. Yeah. Um, so that's reason field. one, and, and the other? This is reason about? one. Yeah. The other one has to do with, well, climate change uh, is, has been said that is the most uh, complex uh, challenge that humanity has ever uh, faced. And therefore, um, it is far-reaching. Uh, it affects all levels of society. Yeah. Uh, it affects the way we live, the way we consume, the way we produce. Um, and it's a fundamental, uh, fundamentally different social challenge, yeah. uh, let's say. And we see, we as academics, we see uh, that we have a role to play. Mm. So we see it as, as an obligation mm. uh, to, to teach our students, mm -hmm. the ones that will become uh, in the international lawyers of the future. Yeah, so what we want to, to do in this master 
Yes, he's present the facts, but this is a, an LLM, so he's a, a master in law, yeah. business law. So actually what we are really interested in is to um, show how um, to look at climate change from a legal lenses. Mm -hmm. That's what we want to do. Mm -hmm. We want to teach the students, um, showing them how uh, actually uh, subjects such as uh, corporate law, tort law, mm. uh, uh, contract law, corporate law, contract law, tort law, for example, mm. uh, can actually have a major role to play in addressing um, climate change. Yeah, so so what, what, what are the effects on, let's, let's focus on large companies, international operating companies, you did a lot of research also mm -hmm. uh, to those companies. Sustainability reporting. Yeah, exactly. Um, let's dive into those organizations because those are for a large part, I think, also possible clients. Uh, perhaps maybe for the students besides law practice uh, uh, for the lawyers you mean yeah the the students that will become uh, lawyers exactly in the they will either work in a law company but also maybe direct in, uh, in definitely in-house lawyers definitely so yeah. the, the so, so what are the big legal issues those large organizations are coping with so one of the things that indeed, um, well, I can talk about one of my courses yeah. that I will be teaching corporate social responsibility, mm -hmm. uh, also the Circular Economy Lab. But yeah. now uh, talking about uh, the large corporations and the challenge that they face yeah. actually brings me to CSR, corporate social responsibility. Mm -hmm. So in this course, uh, we will actually address the role of companies uh, in addressing um, their impact on society. Business decisions nowadays, they, they have an impact on all, level, uh, all levels of society. Yeah. Um, and business know this, uh, and especially, well, globalization allows for all types of information to be shared on social media. Whether a company uh, wants to, to be transparent or not, Mm -hmm. uh, actually, it's not their choice anymore. Uh, the information, their impact will actually be known. It will be public mm -hmm. now or tomorrow in the... Well, actually... But an ethical question. Do, to, if you look at large organizations, you study them, do they want to be good for the world eh, from a uh, mm -hmm. perspective of sustainability? Moral, or do they morally. Moral, or do they have to because of the pressure that's on them. What do you think? Because if I look at the past, I don't know if all you those large organizations... You are in are, doubt. I'm, I, yeah, I'm, you know, I won't say cynical, but I am in doubt. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I understand you. Mm -hmm. I understand you. And uh, I have doubts too. I have, uh, as I told you, I have been working uh, in different countries. So yeah. I um, actually, during my research in the PhD, mm -hmm. I have conducted more than 100 interviews. And I spoke with many companies. I spoke with investors, with the government, with the major uh, representatives of the different stakeholders mm -hmm. for um, sustainability reporting. So I can tell you a little bit about oh. my experience with these companies. Yeah. And the, the, the thing is that um, during my research, actually uh, large multinationals, they, um, they understand uh, that they have a role to play uh, in society. And um, the real motives uh, from which they act, they are a bit unknown. Uh, it's still a mystery but the, uh, for me. Uh, but the thing is that they are already, they all do sustainability reporting. They all have, um, they all have to communicate uh, their activities, their uh, environmental, social and governance risk management. How are they managing their risks? And they do this through a stakeholder engagement. They communicate their business activities to through, in principle, one of the vehicles is a sustainability report yeah. or an integrated report. Yeah. But the large multinationals, they are already doing this. They have started voluntarily doing that mm -hmm. using tools such as the GRI, the Global Reporting Initiative, which is the, the, the most uh, the widely uh, used um, uh, sustainability mm -hmm. reporting uh, tool. Mm -hmm. um, but actually now, since 2000, 
2014, the European Commission has the Non-Financial Reporting Directive, which actually uh, applied now for the financial year of 2018. Mm. So it's very recent still. Mm. Um, but companies, the largest companies, they are already doing it voluntarily because they, they have also the, the... Because they morally the, want it? I, I don't know that for Didn't sure. Did you ask them? I did, I did. Do you want to create a better world also if it costs you and money? And they say yes. This they year. say yes. They say yes. Some, of course, I, I spoke with a number of companies. We mm -hmm. have so many. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so general. it's not representative, no, no. Uh, uh, unfortunately. But of course, when I asked that question, it's a bit... Yes, of course, mm. they want to uh, contribute to a better world. Uh, and they have the means to do that. They have the money to create... A, uh, department uh, for CSR, for sustainability, yeah. which usually smaller companies also don't have uh, mm. the means to do that. So mm -hmm. it's a, a different challenge for mm. them. But to make sure that uh, there is, um, uh, uh, to, to level the, the, um, the field, um, mm. the European Commission has this, uh, this directive that requires companies to, um, in a minimum, report... In a, in a, in a, in a way that's... To level the playing field? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. To, to make sure that the Lagards uh, yeah. join and we have a minimum uh, compliance mm. um, in Europe. Um, so there's a, a balance of um, peer pressure, yeah. uh, but also regulation is actually yeah. uh, accelerating. And 25 students, right, that can do the master uh, for this year? F actually, well, uh, or more. We really, it, it, it's true, no, we, we, we had uh, this limit, uh, limit. Yeah. we wanted to keep it um, a smaller group, yeah. to keep the dynamics, to... Um, uh, and how many students wanted to do the master? More or less than 25? So now uh, we had um, a little bit more than 25 applying, but for the climate change um, track, yeah. we actually, this year, the first year, we have 18 students. Okay. But they have classes together with one of the other tracks, finance, law and behaviour. Mm -hmm. um, and together they are 32. Okay. So, um, and they just begun, right? September. Okay. First of September yeah. we started. And how important is the connection with the you know, with law firms like DLA Piper or other firms, how important is the knowledge of day-to-day -day business in law practice into this master? So we have an, uh, a large network, uh, not only with law firms, but uh, companies and also the government. So on this topic, we, we, we have um, indeed connections um, in all the different stakeholders, but of course the law firms are a very important group. Yeah. Uh, and uh, um, we will try to, to, to bring the students also to maybe to, some vi to have some visits uh, mm -hmm. at the law firm. We have some of the lawyers to come um, as a guest lectures. Yeah. Uh, so we have an interac a strong interaction with law firms, but yeah. not only. So it's not exclusively uh, with law firms, but they are very important yeah. um, parts. I think the master study, it, it will grow the next coming years, right? Definitely, hopefully, and definitely. Yeah. Um, we, we have uh, applications already. Just uh, on Friday, we received new applications already for... Uh, People that, uh, for students who... What are, what are the motivations? Of these students? Yeah. Well, I have to say, they, they all have slightly different motivations, mm -hmm. but uh, there are some things in common. Um, all of them, with no exception, they want to have an impact mm -hmm. on society. Mm -hmm. Um, so they all want to have a role uh, to play in the future um, in helping companies uh, in the transition to a circular economy. Companies, they, at this moment, and they started already, they question, are actually our uh, lawyers and our advisors, are they equipped with the knowledge that we need to address this uh, challenge? Asking the question is giving the answer. And uh, that's why we are here. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, and the students, they also know this. They mm -hmm. also see that uh, they are looking for internships already. Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting. Some already have um, work experience as well. Uh, already some are a bit older, mm -hmm. some um, a bit younger. Mm -hmm. um, but they all basically want to have an impact. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so that is uh, And is, it very great. is job security or job perspective an important motivator? Or? Um, 
Well, job security definitely is a concern, uh, I would say. Mm. Um, but I think mostly they really want to, to have an impact, mm. to, have, uh, to have a role um, in addressing climate change and helping uh, businesses to thrive, mm. basically. Are we in time to save the world? If I would know that answer. Mm -hmm. What do you think? <laughs> um, this is very, very, uh, very uh, difficult question, very mm. challenging, um, complex uh, problem to address. Mm. I'm not sure if we are um, late already, but one thing is that I, I see that the agenda and the stakeholders are they are increasingly um, addressing the problem. We see on different In governmental all sectors, levels, fi yeah, governmental, but financial, also different and the, financial. Yeah. We have recently uh, also a new action plan from the European Commission on sustainable finance. Yeah. Um, we have uh, so the regulator is addressing these yeah. issues, but the market is moving faster, mm. as normally does. Yeah. Uh, but we see important initiatives on an international level. Uh, we see the United Nations, the Sustainable Development Goals, Paris Agreement, uh, although they are not yet itself considered um, mm. um, a success, but they are definitely a step forward. Yeah. And, and I think it, it is very important to look at the problem so we can find solutions, mm. definitely. Mm. But I always uh, like to see a positive side. And, and I think that um, we see the agenda moving and it's important mm. to, to also look at the good things that we are achieving. Mm -hmm. Is the European Commission late with regulation? Well, maybe. But at least now it's coming. And uh, the thing is that uh, talking about the law, ideally, um, and if you allow me to, to continue, uh, ideally the, the law has a protective role. Um, so usually the law tries to, to protect uh, the health or the environment. But also, again, ideally, the law has to allow for, uh, for innovation, mm -hmm. for industrial development, mm -hmm. technological uh, development. And this balance is very difficult to, um, to find. It's a very, very hard balance um, mm -hmm. to find. But I think it has to be tried. Mm -hmm. And I think, well, it looks like we are on the right track. Mm -hmm. But I question, just as you do, are we on time? We don't know. But well, we, as academics, we are playing a role. We are addressing the issue. We mm -hmm. are uh, contributing to this agenda as well. So um, let's see let's how see. the future looks like. Alexander, thank you very much for this thank conversation. Thank you. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here. And on behalf of DLA Papa, thanks for watching. Bye.